What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be painting without pressure opacity. Somebody suggested this to me in the comments as a challenge on our last video and I thought, hey, that would be really interesting. But then I realized I currently already do this. So today I'm gonna to show you guys why I like to use this in my own practice and how you could also implement this yourself to get a better understanding of colors and how they behave. So let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, if you don't know what pressure opacity is, it is uh, here in Photoshop, this little icon right here on the top. So if you turn this icon on, the appearance of your brush stroke is going to be determined by how much pressure you put down on the pen. So as you can see on the page here, as I put down more pressure, it appears, the color appears uh, stronger and more opaque. So if I use a very dark color and I press very lightly, now the brush barely really shows up. But if I press really hard and there you can see, there's a very, very hard stroke there. The reason that a lot of people like to turn this on is because it is a very forgiving thing. So when you put down a color and you press really, really lightly and just kind of glaze over what's already there, even if you chose the wrong color, it's not going to look completely out of place because it's so light. It's like a very thin glazed layer on top of everything that you put down already. Now, when we take this out, it forces you to really think about what colors you're putting down. You have to be very precise with the colors you're using and you have to really think. It really becomes a whole different animal. It, like it just does not forgive you for any of the mistakes that you make in your colors. And I think it's just a really fun way to paint. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with this photo right here. So now usually what I like to do with a uh, practice piece like this is I just don't lay down a sketch. I go straight into it with the colors because um, I'm really just focused primarily on the way the colors look in, in, the, uh, in the piece that I'm trying to make. And if you're wondering what brush I'm using, uh, this is just a brush that I kind of made myself. But uh, this exercise I think will work with Pretty much any brushes that you have as long as you turn off the pressure opacity like I showed you at the beginning. And uh, really for the majority of this painting process, your your artwork is not going to look like anything. So you really have to trust this painting process. And this really is a very fast paced way of painting. Uh, there are really no pauses. I'm not stopping to think about anything. I'm just observing how the colors work and I'm putting them down on the canvas exactly as I see them. Now you can probably see just how rough I'm keeping this piece and these are definitely not meant to be fully finished, fully polished pieces. They're kind of, I like to think of them as um, colored sketches basically. And normally, you know, we would use sketching as a way to practice. That's exactly what I'm doing with this. I'm basically just practicing the um, understanding of colors and trying to reinforce some of the things that I already know. And it's just, it's a, a really fun process to do very free.
Okay, so that was about 25 minutes. So you can see here is pretty much the finished sketch. So these are kind of just like practice pieces. You're just trying to get a sense of the colors and how they work. I obviously exaggerated the colors a lot. I made them a lot more saturated than you would see them in the reference photo. And it's just something that I like to do. But again, I'm basing all of these exaggerations and stylizations on the reference photo itself. I'm trying to see where the warm colors are, where the cool colors are, and how they're interacting with each other. Okay, so because these sketches are really quick to do, I'm just gonna do another one and show you guys how I would approach a different painting. And I know a lot of people like to use the color picker on photographs. I would actually uh, advice against that while you're painting. You could try to do that when you're uh, not painting and just try to see what colors are present on the photograph. But as you get into the painting process, uh, I wouldn't use the color picker on the photograph to find the colors that you use. I would try to force yourself to just think about which colors are there and try to problem solve in that way. the hardest thing to draw it's a, a freaking straight line So normally with these color transitions in the sky, you would probably just put down a very light layer of colors and it would just glaze over what's already there. And it would be really easy to create a gradient that just kind of transitions you from one color to another. But here in this case, we're not able to do that. And we have to really focus on uh, the different colors that are present in the transition itself. And this is again, what's gonna teach you about the way colors interact with each other. and. Um, you're also gonna be able to learn a lot about color harmony in this, with this method of paint. really liking how this one is turning out maybe I'll actually go back in and uh, make it a finished piece you know like go back in with my normal brushes and rework it so if you guys want to see that stick around on my Instagram I'll probably end up posting it there and the link will be in the video description
Okay, so that's been another 25 minutes. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Again, it is not a finished piece by any means. It really is just a way for me to practice my understanding of colors and uh, to really uh, learn how they go together. And I think this process is really a lot of fun to do and it's really freeing. So if you ever feel like you're in a bit of an art block or anything like that, just you know, do something like this where you just don't care. Throughout this entire painting process, I kind of like, I just fully trust the process and I don't worry about whether or not the end product is going to turn out good, whether or not it's going to be something I can post on Instagram. It's just such a free way to paint. And it really, uh, you're not worried about anything. You're just focused on the colors. You're putting down your brush strokes and you're just following what you see in the reference photo. Yeah. One of you guys suggested this to me as an art challenge. And I was like, that's, that's, that'd be a cool challenge to do, but I, I already do this anyways. So I figured I'd just share this with you guys uh, and show you guys my process. And if you guys are interested in doing something like this, I think it's really going to help you guys out in terms of understanding colors and things like that. So there it is. There's our no pressure opacity, one single brush. I did. Yeah, I did use one single brush. Yeah, there's our no pressure opacity, one brush only, uh, kind of an art challenge. It's not necessarily an art challenge for me because I do it as practice anyways, but uh, if you guys want to take on this challenge, like you're more than welcome to feel free to tag me on Instagram, whatever. And uh, <laughs> I'd love to see your guys' pieces as well, but this is, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much what I do for uh, practicing my colors. And if you guys want to get better at uh, understanding your colors, I do recommend this method. So anyways, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, I do more digital art content just like this. So consider subscribing and supporting me. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. You done good, my friend. You done good. I love this thing. Okay, before you ask what brush I'm using, this is one of my personal custom brushes that I've made. It is on my Patreon. Okay.